I walked up the front steps of St. Anne Convent with my one black suitcase in tow on August 25, 1968. The class of 1968 was a unique one in many ways. Nine of us entered on that day. The community was in the midst of renewal following Vatican II. Rules were being re-examined, constitutions were being rewritten, the stark life of cream walls, windows with no drapes, and straight back furniture was quickly changing. We were in the midst of that change, novices and pre-postulants in community together, being able to talk to each other, all of us painting walls, making large rooms as homey as possible. Most importantly, we were learning the values of religious life. Meanwhile, the world sped around us. In 1969, the Vietnam War was a great part of the evening news, which we were permitted to watch. In July, the Apollo mission landed Neil Armstrong on the moon. In August of that year, seven of us became novices. Although I didn't yet have my BA, I asked to be sent on mission to teach. It was in a parish in a small CDP community in Winchester, Kentucky. I loved it. I became involved in the province Peace and Justice Committee and worked with Sister Alice Gerdman. I learned much from Alice about the poor, the need to live and eat simply, and the importance of action. While in leadership between the years of 1994 and 2004, I had the privilege of traveling to France several times, to Ecuador, to Ghana, and to Madagascar twice. They were not the responsibility of the American province, but I truly appreciated my visit to these countries. In reflecting on my 50 years as a Sister of Divine Providence, I experienced only gratitude. I am grateful to God for His presence each day. I am grateful for all the community members that I have shared life with. I am grateful for the elders, those great women who exemplified for me what it is to be a faithful CDP. I am grateful for all the people, young and old, that God put on my life's path in the various missions where I was sent. There has been no mission that I haven't loved. I give thanks to God for His faithfulness and love during my life. When I walked up those steps of St. Ian Convent in 1968, and they had made my first profession of vows in 1970, I had no concept of the blessings that would be before me. And I've known the CDPs for 75 years. My aunt, who was my mother's sister, Sister Anne Frances Purcell, was the Sister of Divine Providence and lived and ministered at St. Ian Convent for most of her religious life. I was also taught by the Sisters of Divine Providence in grade school, in high school, and I eventually taught with them in their schools. Looking back, what was it about their life that really attracted me? Several things, really. First was their kindness. Through the eyes of the child that I was, I saw how kind they were to so many people in the school. The second thing I noticed about them was their concern for the needs of individual students. Probably the most important thing that impressed me, though, was their life of simplicity. After entering myself and learning more about the sisters and their fundamental virtues that guided their life in my life today, I see that their slice of simplicity spoke so strongly to me then and continues to do so today. For these 50 years, I have lived with many different sisters and I've become close friends with many of them. I also have many wonderful memories of students and their families. Today, I am Facebook friends with some of the teachers, but many of the former students. And I love to watch these and to learn about their families, their children, and their grandchildren. They still remain special in my eyes. Currently, I'm making new memories in my ministry with the sisters at Holy Family Home. They are each so dear to me and hopefully become, as I live with them, my life becomes more prayerful and more gentle because of my ministry here. These women truly are an inspiration to me. I did this 50 years ago and I have never been sorry. It's a decision that I've never regretted. May God providence bless us all. On August 7, 1934, I came into this world two months early. I weighed only three pounds, 
and the doctor told my mother I would not live. I was baptized in the hospital and placed in an incubator for six weeks. Before I entered the convent, I was a member of the Third Order of St. Francis for about three years. I appreciated the experience, but as spiritual as it was, it was not enough for me. I told the superior of the Third Order that I wanted community life, and she asked if I wanted to teach or nurse. I was in the business world, so neither option appealed to me. Since I was living at Jeanne d'Arc residence, I approached Sister Marie de Secrecoeur. She didn't ask me if I wanted to teach or nurse, but she wanted to know why I wanted to be a sister. God let me know through her that this was the community of my choice. Mass is the center of my life. Really believing, as I do, that God is in the tabernacle, I believe God put in my heart a love and reverence for the Mass. I know that God is within me and all around us, but God specifically speaks to me in the Mass. As a young sister, I was part of a charismatic renewal group with Father Richard Rohr. That was a beautiful combination of prayer and scripture for me. Before I went to nursing school, I helped in our nursing home, where I had some wonderful experiences. During these years, community life became more important for me. I receive encouragement from the other sisters. Some days I don't feel very holy, but my faith tells me God is with me. I did pastoral care work in Rhode Island for a while. It was nice work, but I wanted to do nursing work. I got a job at a clinic in the Bronx, where I worked for several years, and we were provided all kinds of nursing care. Even though I can't do nursing anymore, it will always be my favorite ministry. These days, I help out in the dining room and am a member of the Peace and Justice Committee. I also belong to a book club, which I enjoy. My only plan for the future is to hope I will be ready when God calls me home. I learned about the CDPs really early because I had them as teachers in the first three grades. I, I saw what the sisters were doing you know, as responding to God's love. And, and I, I began to think that perhaps it was what I needed to do. So that kind of is the background to my sensing perhaps that I had a call. It was more a sense of um, wanting to give to God something for all that God had given to me. I think I went in the beginning with the sense of, well, despite your fears, you, you have to try, you have to see. Maybe even because of my shyness, the built-in people to relate with was helpful for me. And when I went to um, University of Kentucky as a campus minister, I think for me, that was my first experience of community that wasn't basically mostly common life. Like I felt community with those women because of what we shared together. I really, that was my community. And it really was an introduction to me of how much community can be. And I, this was a depth of faith that we were sharing. And it, it, it kind of became something for me that I saw as what community should be. I always enjoy being on a, a, in a place where there are, there's a learning community, both students and faculty and so on. The religious life really is about a basis for community, that, that we have a home base that allows us, but that today I think a lot of what religious life is about is the, is the living, your life where you are geographically or whatever, living your life there in relationship with people uh, in a life-giving way, in a way that really demonstrates that faith is life-giving. I will be with you always until the end of time has always been a quote that has been very special to me. Even before I knew about abandonment to Providence, I knew that God was always with me. Providence has guided me throughout my life, although I did not know this. When it was time for me to go to college, my sister, who was a CDP, 
was able to get me a scholarship. I stayed at Mount St. Martin's with other college students and walked to BMC each day. I was at a sorority dance one night and I thought, there must be more to life than this. And I thought somewhat seriously about the convent. I didn't think I had a vocation, but I knew something was missing. I talked to Sister Agnes Regina and Sister Mary Joan, and they thought God was calling me to religious life. After that, I never looked back, and I have never regretted the decision to become a Sister of Divine Providence. Providence has an unusual way of working in my life. I have always loved lighthouses. In fact, I always said someday I want to be a lighthouse keeper. Well, I didn't get that job, but I was sent to Our Lady Star of the Sea School in Solomons, Maryland, where they did have a lighthouse. I spent 10 years as principal and teacher with a great staff and community. I have spent my years since 1960 in the classroom, either as teacher or principal. Even though some of those transitions have been difficult, I have always been happy where I have lived and worked. Providence has guided and led the way in every aspect of my life. I am very grateful to God and to the congregation. Um, when I was in the seventh grade, um, I had a CDP whom I dearly loved. And she actually is the one who kind of inspired me. She was a good teacher. She was a great lady. and. Um, just lots of fun. She was also quite young, but um, I think probably it was the peacefulness and the happiness, and she always seemed really grounded in everything. No matter what we did, we had a terrible class, um, and no matter what we did, it didn't rattle her. She would calmly try to keep us in order and then move on, and I just really loved her. So I think she was my first indication of, of um, religious life. I think I'd have to pick Ashlyn for the, my first year out. And two of them spent every Sunday doing lesson plans with me so that I learned how to teach because of them. Also, the superior was someone who encouraged leadership, um, gave me responsibilities that I didn't think I was ready for, but obviously she didn't. I didn't kill anybody, so I guess it was okay. When I worked for the province as, as counselor and provincial, um, it was a real blessing for me to get to know the sisters in our country in a way that I never would have had the opportunity, because you never get to live with everybody. Also, the sisters internationally, and to know firsthand what it was like in Madagascar and in Ecuador and in France, to get to um, see what kind of service they provided. And it absolutely was a blessing to, to witness to the ministry that they do in those places, especially Madagascar. In my case, I'm grateful that it was a choice the community gave me to allow me to stay, but it was also a good choice for me. It's been a great life. In the eighth grade, I visited St. Anne Convent. I was quite impressed at how happy the candidates were. Ruth Parent also impressed me with her simplicity and joy. On the way home, I walked from the main road to our house. I stopped at a small bridge on the way and watched the leaves float downstream, reflecting that this is how my life would pass. What is the best thing I could do with my life? Here was the moment of call. I decided then I would become a nun. My parents were surprised, but supported my decision. Mother Celeste Marie told me I was going into nursing school. I loved the freedom and maturing nursing school gave me. During this time, I was privileged to meet Thomas Burton as a patient and know Margie Smith, my classmate, who was named in present-day biographies as the one with whom he fell in love. The biggest part of my nursing career I spent at Holy Family Home. These years were demanding, but very blessed times. I also worked in the West End and over the Rhine areas in Cincinnati. For my Silver Jubilee, I made a trip with classmates to France, Rome, and Assisi. I loved every moment and experience. Among the sunflower fields, I saw more beauty than on any other day of my life. I was chosen to help start the mission in Ghana. Living in such different culture, a 
among generally very welcoming, generous, materially poor people greatly broadened my life in many ways. I shall always be grateful for this experience, for the lessons of trust and providence the people taught me, for all that I learned, and for the friends that I made there. I think I've just been a simple sister of divine providence. God has allowed me the time and experiences to be led by many unique twists and turns, often dragging, and at other times by God's grace running, into what was and is a journey with, and into providence, our loving ultimate reality. I first learned of the CDPs in 1957 when my sister was in her junior, senior year of high school and she was helping out at St. Vincent de Paul Orphanage, which was administered and staffed by Sisters of Divine Providence. And it is in meeting her after work a couple of nights that I met Sister Emerita Verlet, a Sister of Divine Providence, and I became introduced to the sisters. I was a teenager, you know, full of excitement, full of risk taking. But there was one thing that concerned me a little because whenever I, I said to anyone, or anyone asked me, where are the Sisters of Divine Providence? And I said, to, I said Kentucky, they would say, oh, you're with the Hatfields and McCoy. Be careful, be careful, take care of yourself. And I remember when I finally arrived in Kentucky, we came by train, Sister Suzanne was there to meet us and we went, drove through Newport, I guess it was Newport or Covington, I don't even remember, but we, I saw these long, tall houses go all the way back. And I said, those are strange kinds of homes. And she said to me, they're shotgun homes. That's all I needed. So that made me a little uneasy, but I've never met the Hatfields and McCoys ever since. I wish I knew then what I know now. I wish I knew then not to have any expectations because each day is a new day, each step is a new beginning. And once you're on that road, believe me, there'll be bumps, there'll be hurdles, there'll be detours, but just keep right on following the vision and it will be the journey of a lifetime. I came to know the CDPs because they were my teachers and friends through grade school, high school, and college. My uncle, Father Joseph Dimling, was pastor where CDPs were teachers. I had strong connections to CDPs during my childhood, teenage years, and all through my religious life. There was no question of becoming a woman religious of another order. The most challenging times of my religious life were when my mother and dad died in my early 30s. My mother very suddenly, my dad a slow death, both in Fort Thomas, Kentucky. Another death I experienced in the same decade was the loss of worship space and home in a midnight fire that consumed Holy Family Church and Convent in Ashland, Kentucky. Recovery was slow, tedious, and exhausting. It clearly defined community living. The most deep and endearing times were faith sharing, prayer, ministering, and growing with compassionate, forgiving, competent, loving CDPs in community, friends for life, and learning, loving, and cherishing my sister and brother, seeing soulmates in them, even as they raised children and grandchildren. The most powerful, moving moment of my life was on November 13, 1960, after an extended novitiate year, prayer, a private retreat, I, seemingly all alone, but certainly not all alone, made my first vows in a class by myself in our chapel. Never ever and to this day will I forget the grace, power, determination, and the challenge I felt standing in the center aisle in the presence of God, a chapel full of CDPs, my family, relatives, and friends.
I first learned of the CDPs at St. Philip's grade school. Someone gave a vocation talk and mentioned going to St. Vincent Home in Rhode Island where the CDPs cared for babies. Two other girls in my class were interested, so I thought that maybe I might as well. We all entered on June 8, 1956, the Feast of the Sacred Heart. All of us made profession, but only the other two became nurses. What I would tell someone discerning religious life is to prepare for the unexpected. This is probably true for any walk in life. However, God is with us always, leading, helping, providing for, and inspiring us. I've always had a, a couple of go-to prayers for times of difficulties. Footprints in the sand is one and serenity is another. So maybe that's a good thing for everyone to do, to have a go-to prayer for difficult times. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Sixty years, amazing. Being religious, teaching, prayer life, it fills me with awe and wonder in God's great goodness to me. What more have I to say except to praise and thank God for more than I ever deserved or desired? My family, mom and dad, were a wonderful seed bed for the planting of my vocation. The generosity of my parents in caring for two grandparents in our home and of my mom, who for a year and a half cared for my dad when he had a stroke, is an example I will never forget. I was only seven at the time, the oldest of five, and my mom's courage and strength of character have always been an inspiration to me in hard times. My dad's gratitude to God for his recovery, and the sisters from St. Bernard who came to see him, and the sisters who taught me throughout my school years, strengthened my resolve from an early age to serve God in religious life. Teaching for 50 years has been a great blessing. It is my gift, and it has brought me so much joy. It is work and hard work, but nevertheless, the satisfaction is immeasurable when everywhere I go, I meet students I've taught. The many wonderful women who graced my life and community have given me the joy of friendship and the inspiration I needed as a religious woman. Friendships have sustained me, along with my sisters, brothers-in-law, and family. I truly do believe that God's presence is always with us and that people and circumstances are gifts to be treasured, even the negative ones. I value my travels, and particularly the experience of Madagascar and the sisters there, which has had a deep and lasting effect on my life. I look back at all these blessings only possible because I am a sister of divine providence. I give thanks to God for all and sing of the Lord's goodness. I live right across the street from the sisters. And my father worked there for 19 years. So um, I, I got to know them. On August 15, 1958, I entered the convent. And um, I did fine, but I enjoyed every one of my ministries. They were, some were very difficult, but I enjoyed every one of them. Uh, wherever I went, the sisters would teach me different things, and I, I was glad that they helped me. They were a big help. But when I was feeling a little bit um, down, maybe you might say, I would try something different. And I think that's what really helped me a lot. Doing different things, meeting different people. You know, not doing the same thing every, every day. But I think that really helped me an awful lot. Um, I do give thanks for my mom and dad and my brothers and sisters 
who and my nieces and nephews now that are helping me through this um, period of um, illness that I'm going through. And um, I think they're our big support. And I think if we have the support of our sisters, we have the support of our family, you couldn't ask anything else. And, I, and you have God on your side, you couldn't ask for anything else.